Okay, in this topic, we're going to look into solid. Let's look at some basic properties of solid. So we always assume that uh, they don't change their shape even when we hit hard on them. For example, in this picture here, there's a tennis ball being hit by a racket. And the tennis ball doesn't seem to change its, its shape. So we say that this kind of uh, characteristic is rigid. However, they actually do deform under such an influence of a force. So let me show you a video of a slow motion. So this golf ball is being hit hard and being reflected from a metal surface. And you can see that it actually changed shape under the action of a slow motion recording. So it can be uh, tensile and compress or compressive uh, deformation. It depends on how is the force applied on that. So under tensile, it will be like uh, you pull something. Okay, so you pull it outward, then it will go undergo tensile deformation. If you try to use your both hand and you squeeze that. Uh, you try to press it down, that will be called compressive uh, deformation. So in this video, you are going to see uh, a compression testing on a block. Okay. Alright, so it actually pops up a bit and the top and the bottom of this machine actually uh, is trying to press on it. Okay, continue to apply uh, stress on it or force on it. Okay, so you can see uh, under certain stress or force, it start to break. So this will uh, indicate how strong is this uh, solid. So here's another example called tensile stress. Tens tensile test. Okay, so this one actually is pulling. So it's being pulled, and then you can see that there's uh, somewhere near near the top there. Uh, it start to neck. Okay, and then at a certain point, it is going to snap actually. Okay, so there are actually two more types of uh, deformation uh, caused by the different dimension of force which, which is called the torsion and the shear but we are not going to uh, learn in this topic just to give you an, uh, an impression that uh, it actually not just tensile and compressive okay, but they are shear so for example uh, in building this is called the shear, shear wall Okay, so this one is called a sh this whole thing here is called a shear wall. That's to prevent the building from going sideways. Uh, maybe when the wind is too strong or when the uh, uh, top level here there are too many people or too heavy, then it may go sideways and the whole building might topple. Okay, torsion probably is because of twisting due to uh, some strong wind or due to some uh, external factor. Okay, so we go into some example of tension and uh, compression that we see in daily life. So just take this example of a monitor of a computer sitting on a table and uh, this bar here actually is experiencing a tension and then we have a compression down here and then on this support here we actually have both. So inside there's a compression and outside there will be an extension. Okay, so it can happen at uh, many places. Sorry. Okay. So an example is when a car went past a bridge. Okay, so the top part actually undergo a compression and the bottom part actually undergo a tensile uh, stress ok 
okay, or extension. So let's think about that. What is the thing that has this kind of a similar behavior? Okay, as the car went past it, it actually returned to its original shape. So what comes into your mind that uh, something that you uh, give a force to it, it change shape and after that it actually give uh, the same uh, picture back to you or the same thing back to you. Okay. So it is actually the spring. Okay, you see this uh, in your daily life. You have a spring. When you compress them, they uh, get uh, compressed and become shortened. And after that, when you let go your hand, they actually uh, will spring back. So it spring back to its original size. So when you stretch, you try to stretch it, uh, it actually will get extended. And when you let go, it actually get back to its uh, initial length. So here comes the Hooke's law, which means that uh, this solid actually re re is related to uh, spring because spring is also made from a solid. So uh, it actually directly related to Hooke's law. Let's try to vis revisit what is actually Hooke's law. Extension of a material is directly proportional to the applied force, provided that the proportionality limit is not exceeded. So F equals to Kx, that's the equation form uh, from the law. And K is called a spring constant. So if you plot it on a graph of force to extension, it will be a straight line. Okay? And if you find the gradient of it, it will be actually the uh, spring constant. Elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy basically is the uh, area under the graph. Okay, area under the graph. Uh, if it is a straight line, then it will be uh, directly half fx. Okay, if it's a curve, which is not the case of Hooke's law, and then it will be area under the graph. So we'll look at that in other example later. So half times x, uh, half times f times x, then uh, f we change to kx, then we should have kx square. Okay, so that's half kx square. So let's try one example here. We have a spring of 0.5 meter long. It stretches to 0.58 meter. Okay, uh, extension. You have to notice that is 0.08 meter. When there's a five newton of force, uh, trying to stretch it, what's the spring constant? So applying directly F equals to K X, and you sub in the values, then you should get five divided by 0.08, and then you get. Uh, 62.5 okay so that's the introduction for this uh, we'll uh, see in the next video